Welcome back to Brandon at Championship Sunday. Time to meet the dignitaries with public address announcer Mike Kademski. Joining the celebration for this championship final of the 2010 MasterCard Memorial Cup, would you please welcome the president of the Canadian Hockey League, Mr. David Branch. Representing MasterCard Canada, please welcome Marissa Dabari. Please welcome the Minister of Sports for the province of Manitoba, Mr. Eric Robinson. And joining Mr. Robinson is representatives of the province, the Premier of Manitoba, the Honorable Greg Selinger. Gentlemen, please join the local host organizing committee in recognizing two special guests tonight who are here to perform the ceremonial opening face-off. Two ex-Week Kings, one a former Western Hockey League Player of the Year and scoring champion, the other a former WHL Goaltender of the Year as well as a Memorial Cup champion as a member of the Spokane Chiefs. Welcome home, goalkeeper Trevor Kidd. Off. Championship Sunday night at the MasterCard Memorial Cup, matching Taylor Hall and the defending Memorial Cup champion Windsor Spitfires. Braden Shen and the Brandon Wheat Kings on home ice looking to bring this franchise its first Memorial Cup crown. Starting goaltenders are brought to you by Buckley's. Proud supporters of CHL billet families helping keep billets on the ice throughout the cold season. Brandon. 
goes with 20-year-old Jacob Desairs. He turned aside 25 of 29 shots in a 5-4 overtime semifinal victory over the rival Calgary Hitman here on Friday. 18-year-old Rosenheim Germany product Philip Grubauer gets the nod for the defending champs. He turned aside 38 of 41 shots in Windsor's final game of the round robin. That was Tuesday in an overtime triumph over Moncton. Well, the coaches said in this match, Kelly McCrimmon, 2009-10 WHL Executive of the Year, came late to his office last night, finally had a chance to look around the building, realizing how special this is, not just for the franchise, his club, but the entire city of Brandon. On the other side, you have Bob Booker, two-time Canadian Hockey League Coach of the Year. What a great start his coaching career is off to with Windsor looking for back-to-back -back Memorial Cup. Referees from the Western Hockey League, Matt Kirk from the Ontario Hockey League, Darcy Virgil, the linesman, both of the Western Hockey League, Chris Carlson and Kyle Murchison. And we are set to drop the puck for the final of the MasterCard Memorial Cup when these teams open the tournament Friday, May 14th. Windsor 1-9-3. They jumped out to an early 5-0 advantage. Brandon trying to atone and do what no Wheat Kings team has ever done before. He rolled back, runs over Kenny Ryan early, and a quick offside. Keys to the game are brought to you by Irwin Tools, makers of vice grip blocking pliers, marathon saw blades, and other professional grade tools. Kelly McCrimmon hope that this is a continuation, a fourth period, if you will, a continuation of that overtime of the semifinal when Brandon played its best game of the tournament for the Windsor Spitfires and Bob Booker. They're going to try and have to brush off the layoff. It's been four full days and half days in between. Very important to get off to a good start to try and take the building out of it. The same time of layoff, I thought hurt Kelowna when they faced Windsor in last year's title game in Ramuski. Windsor winning it by a count of four to one and Taylor Hall, a marked man to be sure, involved with Kramis Kamenek early. Well, the defensemen asserting themselves early on, Roback with a big hit on Kenny Ryan to welcome him to the building and then Travis Hamanick doing the same thing. You know he's gonna see a lot of that guy in Taylor Hall. They were matched up all game long in opening night last Friday. Taylor Hall, four goals and two assists. Hamanick with a goal and two assists in that semifinal triumph. Lawadniak, a backhander from 10 feet away, gave Grubauer a little trouble on the short side as Hamanick runs into Wellwood. This has been Brandon's most consistent line. Tony Rayala, Jay Fair, the overtime hero Friday, along with Lawadniak as Lawadniak steps off. Wellwood, he scored an overtime winner versus Munson. Canton is shot. That's blocked at the point of attack. Scott Timmons plays it in front. Mitchell back to the blue line and Cam Fowler, the highly touted defender for the upcoming NHL draft. And he's played very well here in Brandon. And will press down the puck in his own territory. A minute 19 in. Justin Shug with Adam Henrique and Taylor Hall. Winter's top trio. Hall in the corner battling Radicke. Some help and support from Justin Shug. Hall to the line, Kenton is shot. That block remains in the zone, and Weave looks to exit with Glenny and Brent Redicky. They were excellent in the win over Calgary, I thought, Sam, on Friday. Yeah, especially Redicky, such a smart player. He's a gifted two-way player. Redicky, a backhander. He's a Detroit Red Wing product. Mark Stone leaves it, Urbom. Down low in behind the net, and shovels it. Funny bounce out of the corner. Stone in front. Fowler breaks it up. Henry puts it away. Shot by Shen. And Grubauer, an early shoulder save. Ah, Shen. Fowler to Ken. Brandon comes out with the same type of energy that they displayed on Friday. Ken's helmet knocked off by Shen. Such a physical force was the LA Kings. First rounder, Hamanek, Stone two on one. Hamanek off the goal post. Travis Hamanek hits the goal post. 
thing we've noticed really early on in this game is that Brandon really wants to assert with its defensemen. But it all starts up front. The entire Brandon Wheat Kings key up what Braden Shen is able to do. And he gets a couple of great chances right off the start. A good hit here by Shen on Canton knocks his helmet right off. And then a little later, Hamannick comes down and rings it off the bar. Grubauer did get a piece to help it off the bar. So did the defenseman Ellis. Hamannick looking for his second of the tournament. Still yet to be signed by the New York Islanders. I'm sure that will be remedied shortly. Jack Cassian with Kenny Ryan and Greg Nemus. Cassian cutting towards the net backhander into Sayers answers his first test for this opening period. Irvine, a huge hit that he takes backhander to Sayers, Rod Zach Cassian. This was the best line, and it's opened every game for the Windsor Spitfires. Cassian out there working hard with Brian. And Greg Neem is part of that line as well. You see DeSeris having to come across the ice. A couple of really good and tough early touches. That bodes well for Brandon. This team's confidence really seems to build on how well DeSeris does early on in this game. Cassian with two golden chances. DeSeris, a third round pick of the Philadelphia Flyers in 2008. Radicke picks the pocket of Dale Mitchell. Back out with Wellwood and Timmons. Timmons playing in his third straight MasterCard Memorial Cup final. Lost with Kitchener in 08, won in Windsor last year. Gary Young, the captain of Windsor, off Redicky, Timmons on side. And Desairs taking no chances. Peter Kelly McCrimmon went with the hunch on opening night. He started with Andrew Hayes, and in the first period, that decision did not work out well. The Windsor Spitfires came out on fire in that first lineup. Nemus and Ryan and Cassian getting it done. And from there, four goals, two minutes and 44 seconds apart for all intents and purposes. The game is over then. Jacob Desairs gets a fresh start here in this game. Looking good early on. Three shots at peace. Pindari had a wonderful playoff to this point. His pass intercepted. Calvert Elaine. Matt Calvert robbed by Grubauer's both goaltenders with some fine work early in this one. Hamannick, Calvert, Shen with Stone. Braden Shen spins, directs it in behind the net. Whenever the Shen line is out, expect to see Kandari and Canton. Taylor Hall upended by Hamannick. And when Hall's out, you'll see Hamannick. Well, the Brandon Wheat Kings really using this building to motivate so far, and it's worked pretty well with a couple of good scoring chances here off the rush. Calvert will get a chance in the middle of the ice to come puck. The puck comes right to him, but Grubauer, so confident, out front takes it off the shoulder, and then Taylor Hall with his head down. Hamannick steps up and lets him know he's in there. Got part of his knee as well. Those two will be matched up, Peter, as you said, all night long. Hall scored two first period goals after receiving a hellacious hit from Hamnick. Opening night, Johnston, a backhand try after a redirect and a save from Jacob Desairs. Lawadniak intercepts the Nemes pass. Tony Real over skates it. He's Brandon's leading scorer in this tournament with seven points. Ryan Ellis rips it from center ice. Beslin plays it off. To Brody Melnichuk, Nemus with Jack Cassian and Steven Johnston. And Lawanyak will head to center. Quick wide, Real with Fair. A weak wrister, Brandon going hard to the net. Grubauer hangs on. Well, Peter Fogbruchner right away shifting his lines. It was Ryan playing out on that line with Nemus and Cassian. But Steven Johnson, I thought, was excellent in the game against Moncton. He gets a turn here alongside Cassian and Nemus. And we'll see what happens with that line as this game progresses. Because that line has really given this Winter Spitfire team a ton of energy, especially early in games in this event. Johnston in his second MasterCard Memorial Cup tournament as well. He played in Belleville in the tournament in Kitchener in 2008. Another Detroit Red Wing product. Wellwood as Hamannick knocked it down at the line, carries it in on the offside. 
you know, we watched Travis Hammond play in the semifinal game, and he has been a real spokesperson for the Brandon Wheat Kings. Acquired in a trade in January, he didn't get to play because of what had happened in the World Juniors, and he said that he's so inspired by the fact that he didn't get the chance to play for a championship for Canada. So this one counts even more for Hamannick. Hamannick was hurt with 58 seconds remaining in the semi-final win of the World Junior in Saskatoon. And a triumph over Switzerland. Adam Henry, he opened the scoring in last year's final in Ramuski. As the puck deflects into the Brandon bench. You know, Peter, as this uh, tournament has gone on, Kelly McCrennan wanted to get his fourth line involved, and here's Sorelli in hard in the forecheck with a big bump on Mark Canton. That line is very key, and as this tournament has progressed, that line has got significantly better with Walker Furlan, and he up top on the right, Sorelli. Darren Ritchie, one of the assistant coaches, a former Wheat King player himself. So many former Wheat Kings have made their way back for this final weekend. Really nice to see. I think it's tough to come by. This building charged. And hopefully the fire marshal is watching, because if not, he'll have some work to do. I hope he's not watching. He's likely in attendance. Plenty with Weave and Redding. He up front for Brandon. Colby Roback, a weak shot. Intercepted and Mitchell to Timmons, tripped up. Mitchell a shot to Sears off a stick. And it went between his legs. Well, Jacob Desairs, all the pressure on Desairs in this hockey game, and Windsor wanting to get a lot of pucks, a stated goal of 50 shots this game. And here's one from a long ways out. You will see a lot of that, regardless of whether a player is off balance or the shot is from a distance. Bob Bugner said he wants his team to have at least 50 in this game. A ball line back out for Bob Bugner with Shug and Adam Henry. Shug, he shot, nearly leaving the post to Sears. Wins are really coming on the last few minutes. Ball in behind the net versus Mark Schneider. Shen takes over to Mark Schneider. The outlet is Henrik runs over the Brandon defenseman. And you know, a bit of a mismatch here with Melma Chuck and Schneider out there against this line of Henrik Hall and Chuck. As a result of finishing first in the round robin, Windsor for purposes of last change, the home team. Ellis, a wrister in from Henrik, he scores! Adam Henrik gets Windsor on the board. Well, Peter, resiliency was the key for the Brandon Wheat Kings in the last game. Down 2-0 and 3-1 to the Calgary Hitmen, and they will have to bounce back here after this goal from Adam Henrik. You'll see the shot is partially blocked, and when it is, Henrik has a lane right behind Melnichuk, the defender. He's able to sneak it through the five hole for the one nothing lead. For the second straight year in the MasterCard Memorial Cup Final, Adam Henrik, a third round pick of the New Jersey Devils, opens the score. When the games are big, this guy rarely disappoints. Behind the Brandon bench from Kelly McCrimmon, a tough goal to give up, but certainly your team has come up with a lot of energy to try to match Windsor. Yeah, we did some real good things uh, early on. We were physical, we had uh, you know, good energy, and and uh, you know I was uh, happy with our start, disappointed to give up the first goal. Looks like you're trying to force the uh, the issue in the Windsor zone and get the pucks behind their D. Yeah, we're trying to play our game uh, certainly much more than what we did the last time we played them, and uh, you know try to do some of the same things that were successful for us on Friday. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Adam Henrique's third of this MasterCard Memorial Cup. All his goals have come against Brandon. Ellis and Shug draw the assist at 6.34. Ellis, he shot block. Kenny Ryan on a loose puck with Nemus and Cassian against Redicky, Scott Plenty, and Shane Weave. Cam Fowler. Watched closely by Scott Plenty, puts on the brakes. Fowler is a fabulous skater. Break wide to Nemus. Break Nemus into the zone. Rister, big rebound in front. Handled by Weeb. 
intercepted, and Nemus fails to control it just inside the line. Kenny Ryan back out there on that line after Johnson got his spin in the second shift. We saw Brandon in these type of scenarios Friday versus Calgary respond so well. Colby Roback. He'll flip it on Grubauer. And Grubauer taking no chances. No surprise, Adam Henrique scoring a big goal here in the MasterCard Memorial Cup, and he really helped out in Friday's opening night win. A 5 0 goal to make it 3 0. Four Windsor against Andrew Hayes, and then later in the game, goes high on Jacob Desaires. That was Windsor's sixth goal in a 9 3 game, and here he is on the board again, Spitz. A member of Canada's World Junior team. Melnichuk pulls it in at the line, off the glass. Lewodniak, Fair, and Riala against the Timmins trio for Windsor. Both teams strength, Sam, their top nine forwards. We thought throughout the course of the CHL that these two may have the deepest groups of any of the teams. Both leading their respective leagues and scoring Fair an opportunity. And Harry Young in the shooting lane, Mitchell. Racing the other way with Timmons as the trailer did not see him in transition. Back from the weak kicks. Fair a shot. Grubauer looks solid. Two on one develops. Mitchell and Wellwood. Dale Mitchell. Toe drag and snapped it wide. Winter with an opportunity to add to its lead. They scored three times against Kelowna a year ago in the first 7-11 on the way to the triumph. Calvert with Stone and Shen. Mark Stone, Braden Shen away from Justin Shug. Plays it in front one and Roback tipped away from the defenseman. You want to be active against Windsor with your defense, but you don't want to leave yourself in a tough spot at the other end of the ring. A good cover up there by Stone. You look at Kelly McCrimmon and he said maybe the best line of the tournament here this morning. He felt that his team has been the Harlem Globetrotters against the Washington Generals. And today he's looking for a little more curly Neal, that's for certain. Matt Calvert has two goals. He opted out of signing at the time a pro contract and staying with Columbus this year to return to his hometown Wheat Kings and play in this event. He loves nothing more than to cap off his decision with a title. Here he comes, Matt Calvert working on Kendari and Grubauer again with a save and hangs on as Kendari, despite his frame, no stranger to throwing his body around. Yeah, and he doesn't mind letting you know it either. And so that matchup will be seen all night as well. If you look at Philip Grubauer and Peter, you go back to the Barry series. After struggling to get by Kitchener, Grubauer really took over the reins, winning four straight against Barry, winning all three games in the round robin. So riding a nice lengthy win streak right now. This a Windsor team that rebounded from a three games to nothing semi-final series deficit versus the Rangers on their way here. Paul, oh, nifty move. Played it in front. Lenny intercepts Henrique again. And Weave able to dislodge the puck from Adam Henrique, the game's goal getter. Ryan Ellis now has three assists in his last two outings after going pointless in his first two. Redicky carries in on the offside. Peter, where every single eye in the building focused on Taylor Hall, every time he gets the puck, the crowd on its collective feet. And here he just tries a pull and drag move against Brody Melnichuk. And you can see Bob Bugner really trying to get that matchup and take advantage using Hall speed against the slower defenseman of the Brandon Wheat Kings. Hall would love nothing better than to not only win another title, but to earn another MVP honor, something no one has done in this tournament format. Fair. Deflected in behind the net. Fair, another opportunity. Just failed to transfer from skate to stick on the feed from the slick Ray Allen. Fair to the right point. Hamannuck a risker. That hit Fowler. Hamannuck again. This time it's Timmons in the lane. Back off his stick to Rayala with Fair. Jay Fair 
Lawanya, Rayala, and Timmons forces the puck to the open wing. That's one thing the Wheat Kings want more of Rayala. They want him to shoot the puck. He's got a rocket, and he can do so on the fly as well. Pindari offside. You're watching the MasterCard Memorial Cup Final on Rogers Sportsnet. CHL Buckley's Billets, brought to you by Buckley's proud supporter of Billet families, helping keep billets on the ice throughout the cold season. Travis Hamannick's pass off Greg Nemus at Calgary Flames, first rounder. Braden Shen. The Brandon Captain leaves his way in. Shen attempts a toe drag on Kendari. Nemus helping out, hits the referee with that pass attempt. Shen to a loose puck. Stone teed it up, and that had to hurt Kenny Ryan, who dived in front of it. Throw back. Solid jolt from Cassian. Kandari to Canton. He shot the Sears to save. And already, you feel like the next goal is critical in this one. Oh, going had a big ball in it after that Windsor goal, but starting to pick things up again. Canton plays it off for Kandari. Kandari leads the entire tournament to plus minus and plus seven. Intercepted Weeb, his high rising wrister over top of the cage. Urban shoots it in, and the Wheat Kings clear the zone. Nearly 12 minutes into the opening period of this championship game. Melnichuk. Canton. And Bob Bugner again has his top line out against Brandon's second deep carry. Lenny backhands it. Fowler looking to clear it in and sends it out of play. Peter, the Wheat Kings are trying to get back to what they do best, and that cycle of puck is Shen working down low. Now it does go off the referee's skate, but still able to maintain possession of the zone thanks to Calvert. A nice shot block there by Ryan. Stone set up at the top of the circle, but Ryan sacrificing everything for the shot block. Ryan scored in each of the first two games. He scored the first goal of this tournament. And second round pick of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Kenny Ryan. Gail Mitchell has the puck slapped off his stick. Fowler directs it in front block. Wellwood using his speed effectively. He's been excellent in this event. And Hamannick picked his pocket and heads up ice. Hamannick, Fowler with an excellent one-on-one -on -one play on the defender, Hamannick. Continues to get better in that area. Wellwood to Mitchell. Returns the favor. Timmons robbed by the Sears. Peter, one of the things the Windsor Spitfires like to do, they love to spread the ice, and it's almost a possum-like play because they send someone to the far board. You'll see the right side of your screen. You see four red jerseys, and then you see the fifth. And that's what creates the chance, really separating the D. Good pass back in front of the net. And Desairs has to be unbelievable to make that stop on Timmons, all because Windsor is spreading the ice. Desairs has already faced 11 shots. Brandon with the first three in this period, now being outshot 11-7. Pindari moves laterally. His wrister went off the arm of Braden Shen. And steers it for his defense partner, Pindari. Shen intercepts off Pindari. He locates it and plays it past Irvine. Melnichuk in a race with shot back to the puck. Urban, we've got Brandon on the board with a big goal on Friday in the semifinal. And a backhand pass goes off Henrique's stick right to Desairs, and Henrique involved with Brody Melnichuk. And again, Bob Booker taking advantage of that second deep pairing. That's not going to work out. If that's a matchup that's going to take place all night long, Windsor will benefit from it. It's just too much speed on that line for Melnichuk and Urbom to handle. And as soon as it goes out there, Kelly McCrimmon's going to have to do a better job of trying to reverse that matchup or at least counter it. Brent Redicky to take the face off versus Nemus. Hamannuk plays it on right wing. Too far for Scott Glenny. Gives Chase versus Ellis. And drills Ellis into the corner. This is Scott Glenny, the Dallas first rounder. 
Brandon has been as physical as they wanted to be in this first frame. It's yet to result in a goal, however. Ellis right back up as you knew this champion would be. What an impressive resume for the Nashville first rounder, Ryan Ellis. Clears it in off the glass, does Young and out of play. Ryan Ellis and the Spitfires lead it 1 0. Dallas first rounder Scott Plenty on your left, Nashville first rounder Ryan Ellis on your right, and Ellis will try and fake Plenty out, but he is like a freight train. And Ellis ends up taking it in the chops. A very physical start for Scott Glennie in this game. He was at an interesting tournament, to say the least. Ellis and Glennie helped Canada win an Ivan Holenka Memorial Under-18 tournament together in 2008. Kenny Ryan backhands it in behind the net to Sears. Hits Nemus with it. Rolls off the dasher board. Cassian. Still managed to get a shot away despite the efforts of Lawadniak as Fair moves to center and uses the boards to bank it towards Ray Allen. Involved with Brian Ellis. Ray Allen gets his stick up in the grill of Ellis. His play continues. Lawadniak on the cycle for Urban. Urban not afraid to be active, although he's not a big point getter. Served him well in the semi. Colby Roback, he scored a goal in the semi-final as well. That gave Brandon a 4-3 lead. Herbaugh up the middle, off the stick of Lawadniak. Bit of a fly ball handled by Grubauers. Both teams making changes. Adam Henrique's third of the tournament as the defending Memorial Cup champions in front. Ryan Ellis wanted to hit from behind in the Scott Plenty play. We showed you coming out of the break, and here, Rayala. Gets the stick up into Ellis's grill and definitely had a good case for an argument there. Ellis snapping that head back, Rayala trying to win a puck battle. No calls made. Bob Bugner wants the Timmons line out against Shen as well as that D pairing. Timmons moves up. Mitchell just missed. Deal Mitchell, a great opportunity. Terrific breakup. And Mitchell fails to cash in. Stone towards Calvert. Kamenuk at the blue line. He shot a screamer over top of the net. Mitchell, smart chip to center ice. Wellwood nearly from his knees found. Timmons, here's Kandari racing in. Blocked by Shen. And Calvert looking to send Mark Stone away. Stone replacing Glennie on that top line in game three of the tournament for Brandon. Henrique dives and saves an icing. Hall, Henrique and shot. Taylor Hall. Brandon collapses and Glennie accepts the pass. To Weed. Delayed offside, Glennie needs to clear the zone and Windsor exits anyway. Hall has been added in an assist in place of Shug on the opening goal by Henry. He now has seven points in the tournament. Weave slides it in. Fowler hit the linesman. They didn't like that at the Windsor bench. You could hear that from here. And for Brandon, that puck's got to get in deeper. What you do five feet inside your blue line and out of it makes such a difference in these types of games. Peter, we want to show you a breakout. It all starts off the face-off. You want to see perfect execution. Have a look at this Windsor face-off. Left, right side of your screen, you see Wellwood go right up the boards. He accepts the bounce pass off the boards. From there, Windsor able to spread the ice and pass into the middle to Timmons and all the way across the ice to Dale Mitchell, who's snake bitten on the play, but nonetheless, great transition off a defensive zone face-off win. Mitchell scored the game-winning goal in last year's MasterCard Memorial Cup final in the 4-1 win over Kelowna. He's had two great chances in this first period. Cross-corner shoot-in towards Reala. Nemus one-hands it on, and Grubauer steers it for Ryan Ellis. To Zach Cassian, chips and chases. Snyder, little 
soccer. Excellent kick to Lawadnia. Torreala versus Ellis. Good battle along the boards. And Nemus, the responsible center, helps out in his own territory. Ellis weaves inside the line. Stephen Johnston hits Calvert with that shot at him. Throwback settles things down as both teams making changes with just over two minutes to go in this opening period. And the go Wheaties go chance starts again. Shen with speed out of his own zone. A couple of nice moves. Still pursues the puck. Timmons, Mitchell, and Wellwood back out for the Spitfires. Fowler and Kandari. To Wellwood. Stopped up at the line. Stone with Calvert. Shen just offside. Log on to MasterCardMemorialCup.com for the Toyo Tires post-game show and MasterCard Priceless Moments, hosted by Sam Cosentino. Well, a great start to this game. Some of the tenderness early, early on from Windsor based on the layoff. I thought Brandon had a couple of great shifts early on to get the crowd involved, but since that goal, it's come down quite a bit. Although starting to gain confidence again. Hall on left wing. Taylor Hall. Ellis to the right point. That hit a body. Hall so explosive on that first step. Dug on the cycle with Henrique and Hall to the line and Kent. Canton banks it off the end board. We've seen a lot of weird things at this end of the building with funny bounces. Irvine Staples. Hall to the end boards. They continue to tussle away from the puck. Glenny Arister. Hits Canton. Canton's been one of the unsung heroes for Windsor in this tournament. Shug into the last minute. Rister fought off literally by Desir. Timmons through a screen. And Desir with a couple of large stops. Having to come up both so big, everyone wondering how he would respond in this game. First of all, it's Justin Chug coming across the middle of the ice. And then that big bounce off the end boards allows things to continue. Here comes Chug again across the middle of the ice. Good save there by Desir. And he would stop another one from Timmons shortly thereafter. Desir's with 14 saves. Everyone knew he was a huge factor. Windsor trying to add a late one to head into the dressing room with. Real in behind Lawadniak, gets held in at the line. Nemes, Timmons, Wellwood, he scores! Well, Peter, those goals in the last minute so deflating for a team, but this is not an unusual situation. On two occasions in the semifinal on Friday, Brandon had found itself down by twice, but this year with Fair trying to get it out and Fowler keeping it in, that puck has to get it out of the line, and when it doesn't, the three Windsor Spitfires work that puck like magic, and it's a 2-0 lead for the defending champs. Wellwood, second of the tournament. He knocks the overtime winner versus Moncton in the round-robin finale for the defending champions. And Windsor in search of a repeat with a 2-0 advantage late in the first. You know, Peter, it's all about the little details, and it's all about winning the little battles, and that was the simplest little battle you could win. Windsor won it, and a goal resulted. Stone the other way, hooked up, and there'll be a Windsor penalty. And remember, Brandon was able to fight back in the semifinal on Friday from 2-0 and 3-1 deficits. Stone really growing into his body. He's tall, he's gangly, and he's learning to become a pro while playing at this level and here he's able to take that puck you want to see the release right there instead he gets hooked up by Ellis and at least draws the penalty and really important face off here for Brent Timmons and Fowler draw the assist on the Wellwood goal at 19-27 Brandon with the game's first power play not a lot of time to work with in the period however Shen good feed Glenny broke his stick on the shot at him The Spitfires enjoying the opening 20 minutes. Time for the play of the...
first period, which is brought to you by Easton. Confidence is everything. Kept in at the line by Fowler. It's knocked down by Timmons. A little exchange, and it ends up on the stick of Wellwood, who gives the Windsor Spitfires a 2-0 lead. All about winning puck battles. Both defensemen drawn away, and Wellwood makes it 2-zip in the final minute of period number one. We will head back in our first period intermission for a Sportsnet Connected update with Jim Lang. Rock Falls will be joined by CHL President David Branch. That and a whole lot more next. Two nothing to score. The Windsor Spitfires leading the Brandon Wheat Kings. Pleased always to be joined by the president of the Canadian Hockey League, commissioner of the Ontario Hockey League, David Branch. And every year about this time, we always say how well the organizing committee in each and every city has done, but Brandon has certainly done its thing to to a fine form. Oh, huge. I mean, it's been awesome. And, you know, Jeff Crystal is the chairman of the host organizing committee. And, um, you know, the hundreds of volunteers, they literally turned away hundreds. I mean, the whole community's involved, and it's so special. Everywhere you go, you see it, you feel it. And uh, communities like Brandon, we saw it last year in Ramuski. I mean, it's it's very, very special. And Mississauga is certainly going to have their work cut out next year. I want to ask you this question. The Canadian Hockey League was front and center. You were handing out very stiff penalties for headshots. But I think you're trying to get the message across to all your players in the league and perhaps players uh, who aspire to be in the Canadian Hockey League about respecting the game. Oh, great point. I mean, you, you look at the, the feature before, you know, the Jordan Eberleys and Matthew Pumples and Tyler Sagans. Taylor Halls, Cam Fowlers, they come to our league because it is the, the best development ground in terms of the coaching, the, the quality of uh, facilities, style of play, but it's also punctuated by respect. Uh, we've got to have respect in our game, and uh, we work hard, and all our teams have bought into that, so I think that's what really sets us apart. Uh, you made a couple of announcements here in Brandon that the Canadian Hockey League will be involved in NHL 11, part of EA Sports, and also brand new online for the league, too. You're really taking the league in some different directions. Well, you know what? We're really reaching out to young people, first of all, and that's where they are in terms of technology and the like. And it's a huge, huge statement for our league to be part of the EA Sport program with the NHL. And it's going to really just help us grow our brand and take us to the next level. How good are you at these video games? Are you any good at all? Uh, I, I can't even turn it on, so <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know, and you've got to be pleased to the energy in this building. The, the fans have certainly responded, and you know, this is almost a, a dream matchup when you think of it, the host team uh, playing so very well against the defending Memorial Cup champions. Oh, hey, you know what? It's as good before the game tonight as I've ever seen it and felt it, and it's a tribute once again to the Brandon fans. They're, they're, they're great hockey fans. They know their stuff. And it's uh, been special to see the Wheaties get this far. So it's, it's just a great time. And, and in closing, you know, too, Rob, I'd just like to say hi and uh, best to all our armed forces watching our and the Armed Forces Network. Uh, we had a special program last week in CFB Shiloh where we rededicated the Memorial Cup. I know you talked about it in the opening, but that's a big part of uh, the power of sport. And we're glad we can be part of it. And so good luck. And they're the greatest team there is in the world. Always a pleasure talking to you, David. Thank Thanks, you. Rob. Thank David you. Branch, the president of the Canadian Hockey League. He'll be back at the end of the game to hand out the very special hardware. Right now, the Windsor Spitfires have a 2-0 lead after 20 minutes, but still lots of hockey left. Twenty minutes in the Bucks. Windsor with a 2-0 advantage. It started with a very physical nature. And most of that involved Kamenik going up against Hall. Three bumps, a little agitation after the whistle blows. And then the Windsor Spitfires would settle down. They wouldn't necessarily lean on Hall, but after a puck's turned over, Henrique's five hole on Jacob Desairs to open the scoring in this game. And there, again, another bad turnover. As Fowler keeps it in over the line, though Ferrandwadnia can't get it out. And ends up to be a three-way passing play after the Fowler touch. Wellwood and Timmons and Wellwood finishing it off. Adam Henrique with his third of the tournament. Open the scoring. Eric Wellwood. The younger brother of Vancouver Canucks, Kyle Wellwood. And there he is. In the building today to watch his younger brother try and capture a second straight MasterCard Memorial Cup. Brandon will open this second period with a power play for 146. Colby Roback, Calvert, Shen, Glennie, and Weave on the Brandon power play, and Roback inter 
intercepted easily by Harry Young. Matt Calvert in his final junior hockey game. Calvert tips and chases to himself. One hands it to an open corner. Wellwood with a good play. Glenny knocks it out of midair, and Kandari slides it down the ice. And you have to pay attention here. That four forward set used by Kelly McCrimmon. That can be a dangerous proposition against Paul and Henrik on the penalty kill. Glenny with good speed as he enters the zone. Scott Glenny knocked to the ice by Mark Kenton, and Kandari banks it the distance. And both teams making changes in this Brandon power play. Need to see more urgency from Brandon here with the extra man. Three for 16 in the tournament coming into this game. Windsor's allowed just one power play goal. Hamannock, change direction, just miss. Redicky to Hamannock. A hard wrister and again wide of the net. Ray Allen. Down low, Lewodniak protects the puck. Windsor, aggressive on the penalty kill. Shot blocked by Henrik this time. Hamannick again, his wrister on target, loose in front. And sit down the ice by Cam Powell. Pretty good flurry that time for the weak king for the man advantage. Kenny Ryan in deep. So is Ellis. Back hands it in front for Nemus. Nemus should have drawn an assist on the Wellwood goal that was given to Fowler. Despite the fact Fowler made an excellent play to hold it in at the line. Let's see if that has changed. Cassie is knocked down by Brendan Walker. Brandon nearly trapped with too many men on the ice. As Windsor kills off the game's first power play. First period scoring summary is brought to you by Power of Hockey. Adam Henrique with his third of the event. Eric Wolwood after an overtime game winner against Moncton with his second shots on goal in favor of the Spitz, 2-1. to one. And the Wheat Kings trying to get the home crowd back in it. Adam Henrique and company inch a little closer to becoming the first repeat winner since 1994-95. Don Hayes, Kamloops, Blazers won it back to back. Timmons ripped it considerably wide. Wellwood backhander through a screen. I'm not sure to say or saw. Timmons again on the one timer. Mitchell. This line's been too much for Brandon to handle. Well, Peter, it all starts uh, off the face off, and Timmons, who is a great. Faceoff man is able to win the draw from there. Wins is able to keep it in the zone, and Timmons ends up with the chance. Good cycle down below the goal line. They get it out in front as Timmons just slides back, moving away from coverage. Great play to get away from Herbaum and the shot. And a good chance by the Windsor Spitfires thanks to a faceoff win. Timmons won seven of ten faceoffs that he took in period number one. Had three points in the round robin triumph over Brandon. It's Scott Timmons, a Florida six-rounder. All wins are about the last 12 minutes after an excellent start by the Wheat Kings. Fowler smartly to Nemus, who shoots it in and roll back to the Windsor line. Kenny Ryan, having a content to steer it out. Ryan Ellis blasts it in. These boards. Make the game even more exciting. You just never quite know where the puck might go. Especially on the open end, where Windsor is defending right now. Boards in the glass there, play tricks all tournament long. Nemus carries in. Greg Nemus, toe drag, wrist her loose, and Hamannock off the stick of Redicky, held in by Ryan Ellis. That hit rollback stick. Nemus clutch by Redicky. Ellis keeps it in, blocked in front. Redicky turns it over, and then slashes Ryan, snaps his stick, 
And we'll go to the penalty box and Windsor moves to the power play for the first time in this championship affair. Peter, the Spitfires with a 2-0 lead after the first period. If you look at the goal differential for the Brandon Wheat Kings, in the regular season, a plus 60, and then a bad trend started to occur in the playoffs. 20 goals for, 28 against. And here in the MasterCard Memorial Cup, a minus 12 in the first period, and that's been a big reason for what has been a tough tournament so far for Brandon, even though they are here in the final, and you see Redicky with the slash on Ryan, breaking his stick in half. Frustration penalty, he was mad at himself for not moving the puck out of his own zone. And Redicky takes his seat, and Brandon, I won't call this a must kill. You do not want to trail this highly talented team by three. Henry Hall with Shug, Ellis, Fowler, and the Windsor power play. Taylor Hall away from Calvert. Hall shot blocked by Brody Melnichuk, tied up in his equipment. Henry keeps it alive despite losing an edge. Henry to the blue line, and Ellis, who can really fire the puck. Ellis. Watches it, the rebound, loose in front, backhander to Sears the save. And a quick whistle. Irvon and Shen go over to greet Taylor Hall. Competitive juice is really starting to flow. A big slap shot from the point creates a rebound, and then Henrique on the backhand. I love to Sears how he just followed the puck. See Ellis' shot get through and watch DeSaris follow that puck. He is focused and zoned in on it and stops Henry from point blank range. Face 20 shots in the Brandon net. There's another. Henry with a tip. That was a difficult save. Henry moves back in the high slot. Ellis blocked by Weave. Taylor Hall. Rister. He scores. Some kind of shot by Taylor Hall. Scouts are salivating over there, Taylor Hall. There will only be two chances to get him. That'll be Edmonton or Boston, and most likely Edmonton. But here, a partial shot block. Henrique does a good job to get it to Hall. You have to respect the passing ability because he's been better at that this year. But let's not forget, this guy is a true marksman. And here, with the wrist shot from the faceoff dot, makes it 3 nothing in the power play for Windsor. An absolute laser beam from Taylor Hall on the power play. Henrique should draw one of the assists. Tip shoveled right across the crease by Timmons. And the Windsor machine is clicking on all cylinders. Mitchell with Timmons who just missed a glorious opportunity in Wellwood. Ellis another assist, his second of the game. Along with Henrique, so Hall, Ellis, and Henrique, all with multi-point games already. Mitchell. Kelly McCrimmon might be getting close to using his timeout as Mitchell zips it wide on a one time. Hall wins her right now, and has been for quite some time. Melnichuk, Sorelli wants a change. Peter, another tactic used by Bob Bugner is the hard rim. And he wants to get the defenseman turned around. Watch this hard rim. Now, DeSaris can't get out to stop it. And when that happens, great things happen for the Windsor Spitfires. It goes right back towards the goal. Timmons with a great chance as it goes across the blue ice. But then those chances are a result of a hard rim dump in by Windsor. Taylor Hall with that goal and an assist has moved into a tie with Jimmy Budnick for the tournament lead in scoring. Both with eight points. Eight one of the shots on goal in the second period in favor of the defending Memorial Cup champions. 24 9 to this point in the game. Fowler into the zone, off throwback, and into the seats. The shares trying to keep his team in it. Paul showing off his wizardry.
behind the Windsor bench, Taylor Hall helping out Adam Henrique with an ice bag to keep him cool. Uh, it was a little hairy there in that first period. You said to us before the game, your concern was the energy that Brandon was going to come out. You were able to counter that. Yeah, they came out uh, storming and uh, they're hitting us all over the ice and uh, they definitely were into it early. We did weather the storm. We got a big goal from Henrique. Uh, now we're just going back to Windsor Smith by style. Puck possession game, puck management. What did you say to the D? You want them to keep the puck in front of them. Everything in front of us. Keep not going back. Don't take pucks back. Everything's in front of us. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Bob uh, Bogner, his team now with a 3 nothing advantage. Windsor riding an 11-game postseason win streak entering this final at the MasterCard Memorial Cup have not lost since they trailed Kitchener three games to nothing in round three of the Ontario Hockey Lake playoffs. Calvert with a burst into the zone. Slides it. Hamannick jumps up on the play. Shoveled it in front. And Grubauer taps it. Calvert with Stone and Braden Shin, the top unit for the Wheat Kings. Kenny Ryan to Zach Cassian off the heel of his stick. Calvert with a little room. Matt Calvert at the end of the shift. A diving play by Kandari will be a Windsor penalty. Blast by Irvine and Grubauer, who hasn't been tested for a while in this game, makes the save. On a good little buzz to get the building back in it for the Brandon Wheat Kings. And on a line change, the puck is turned over. Right in neutral ice, and you can see numbers going the other way, but Kandari does what he has to do as he comes back to take the puck away from Calvert. And in doing so, the penalty is drawn by Calvert and now Brandon with an absolutely essential power play. Ellis and Kandari were there, and it's Ellis who gets called for the hook, and obviously Bob Bugner upset with the call. Ellis with two assists in the game, and now two minor penalties. Brandon, second power play. In desperate need of something to feel good about. A 3 0 wins her advantage. Quick change here. Riala off the mass. A goal, Henry Grubauer on the one timer from Tony Riala. Best chance of the night for Brandon. Rwanda. To Riala with fair. Broken up by the goaltender. Kamenek keeps it alive. Hit Fowler's stick and went wide. Went Redicky to Jay Fair. Good stick by Timmons. Out it comes. Fair offside at the line and going down as Harry Young collides with Taylor Hall. And Hall goes over to say, hey, Harry, are you all right? Philip Grubauer has not been tested often in this game, and this puck on end ends up right off the shoulder and the helmet of Grubauer. And so good for the Windsor Spitfires. Here late in the postseason, going back to the four-game win over Barry in the J. Ross Robertson Cup. Really good in the first couple of minutes of this game. Scott Clenny moves in, cross ice. Kent knocks it off his stick and an opportunity for Henry to shoot. A bit of a short hop on DeSears. Henry the goal and an assist. Taylor Hall a goal and an assist. Plenty in full flight. Scott Plenty robbed. Calvert scores. to get the Wheat Kings on the board than the hometown boy, Matt Calvert. Good transition here. Plenty with a burst of speed. Shot creates a rebound. Calvert ends up getting it, corralling it. I love his patience and getting it past Grubauer. Look at the patience here by Calvert. First of all to the forehand, then settling the puck, and then with great precision. Third of the tournament. He also scored in game one versus Windsor. Brandon on the board. A team that rallied back from the 2 2 goal deficit Friday in the semifinal win in overtime over Calgary. So loud in here that Rawadnia could not hear the whistle for offside. Calvert's 
third of the power play from Glenny and Shen at 8.16. And it starts with Glenny because of that grip first to speed down the wing. His shot on goal creates the rebound, and it's Calvert who follows it up, raising his hands to the air. And the man who turned down a professional contract to play with Columbus to try and win the cup gets his home team on the board. And looking to further urge his team on. The building's back. And that's key. Kelly McCurney talked about it in our pregame. with Nemus and Ryan. This Windsor team so good after giving up goals. They reinforce that bump up shift all the time. Cassian controlling it. Backhander shoveled at by Nemus and Desir shuts the door. Well, Peter, you are so right. When you look at the Windsor Spitfires, they have trailed for exactly three minutes and two seconds the entire tournament long. Bob Bugner puts a premium on the shift after a goal either for or against. And here he goes with that Nemus, Cassian, and Ryan line. And this line controls the puck. Puck management, as Bugner pointed out, and a good chance created right after Brandon got on the board. Cassian and Nemus, big bodies. Especially Cassian. He, he had a shift, Zach Cassian, in this tournament that led to a Kenny Ryan goal where he literally controlled the puck for 35 seconds. They go upstairs. Are they taking a look at that shot on the short side? Let's have another look at it with the Sayers down there and then second crack and well there is a puck there for sure as it gets by to Sears, but did it get across the line let's yes, have a yes, listen Charlie yep okay what do you have here I, I got him covering it blowing the whistle okay okay just a sec okay he's got it covering and blowing the whistle okay let's see see that puck's in the net so we gotta wait for this uh we gotta wait for this replay coming on here watch just a sec there okay and the whole thing is here, when was the whistle blown? This may very well be a goal. Darcy Virchel is the referee on your left, Tim Campbell on your floor screen, Charlie Benfeld, who both work in the National Hockey League, with the discussion here in the video replay. Darcy, yes. we have the puck across the line after a rebound, okay. but I'm not sure when you blew your whistle. That's the trouble. Like on his first lap. The player uh, takes a backhander, if you will, and it deflects off the goalie. And then he has the puck across the line. But we don't know when your whistle went. You follow me? Yeah. Just a sec. Okay. I think you also have to take into consideration the act of blowing the whistle. And you can see the referee virtual on your left in the act of blowing the whistle at about the same time the puck goes in. A lengthy review. A short time after Calvert had scored for Brandon. Boy, is that ever close. to make this call, especially not at this juncture. We have the puck across the line. We're going with goal. It's a good goal? Good goal. Thank you. Four, one Windsor. Nemus will get credit for his first of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And there's going to be a big explanation at the other bench. Well, Peter, we had several looks, several listens. The one thing that I wonder if it was taken into consideration is the act of going to the whistle, the act of raising the arm to blow the whistle. But it was quite clear that once the whistle had been blown, the puck was already past the goal line. Windsor with another response right after giving up a goal. 
140 after Calvert had scored on the power play. Greg Nemus has his first of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And you can tell they don't like the decision very much here in Westman Place and Brandon. Steps up on Wellwood, who has a Windsor goal. Timmons slapped off his stick by Hamannick. And Windsor, with a strange one, restores a three-goal lead. Mitchell in the stairs, just a piece. Mitchell wondering what he has to do to turn on the red light. Hamannick. We're going to get a penalty if he continues to play. Without the helmet, and now it's a Wellwood wins the battle, coming off the board. In the seam, the Mitchell jumps over his stick and roll back off the high glass and out of the zone. Mitchell looking to move off the ice and a change will do so. Cassian and Ryan, the assist on the Nemus rule at 9.56. Pindari to Taylor Hall. Hall, Shug, and Henry hit the line. Doug finds Hall in behind the net. Taylor Hall to Shug. Stick lift by Ray Allen. Here's Ellis. Just using the end boards. Loose in front. Shug. The Sears drag the pad. Still free. Shug off the skate of Ray Allen. And the Sears is infuriated. Wawadniak involved with Adam Henry. Windsor close to adding to a three-goal lead. After a goal mouth a scramble, gave Windsor back that three-goal edge. Another one ensues, and Justin Chug a big part of it. Ryan Ellis with a smart play to bank it off the end boards. And we've talked about how lively they are with that bounce. A big scramble ensues. Justin Chug now bouncing it off Ryala's skate. And Desaires having to be quick to cover it up. You can see him scrambling around the crease. Top of your screen, the puck is still loose. It'll come back behind the net here. And Shug bounce pass almost gets by Desaires again. Called the local mathematician, by the way. 40 seconds, not 140, after the goal by Calvert. On the somewhat strange one that they looked at for a long time upstairs by Greg Nemus that has restored a three goal lead in this championship game for Windsor. Hamannick blocks the Ellis shot. Four on four, penalties to Herbon with Brandon and Adam Henry. Colby Roback. His pass, the puck jumped up on end and results in an icing. MasterCard Memorial Cup unsung heroes celebrate off-ice demands of the game like early morning practices. Each week, two heroes face off and funny video tributes. Vote for your favorite and help pick a champion. Go to mastercard.ca slash Memorial Cup. Another face-off win. Wellwood with a goal in the game. This one blocked back to Wellwood. Tees it up for Mark Canton. Good low drive. Timmons looking to bank it off to Sears. And Shen will backhand it and find the Brandon goal getter, Matt Calvert. Wellwood around Hamannick. Wellwood again. Rips it over top of the net. Excellent individual effort by Eric Wellwood. Such a threat, both on the penalty kill and on four on four. Because of that great speed, he was able to sneak by Hammond. Mad at himself, too. He thought he should have finished the job. Sixth round pick of the Philadelphia Flyers, Eric Wellwood. Shot Canton, the trailer. Scores! Mark Canton off the bar and in. 5-1 Windsor. The Windsor Spitfires getting plenty of production from its top dogs. And now Mark Canton, a lesser point producer, but more known for his defensive style, gets it up to Shug, and then he will support the puck thereafter, get into a perfect shooting position 
with a huge gap created because of the respect for Shug. It goes upstairs, beating the Sayers, and it is a 5-1 Windsor lead. Mark Canton's first postseason goal since he found the net in game two of the Ontario Championship Series versus Barry. And the biggest lead of the game is four. This juggernaut, we wondered what might happen if everything went Windsor's way and all their players played their best. You're seeing that in this championship final. Another look at the goal. You'll see Kent the shug, and now look at the defense retreat. And when that happens, a huge gap opens up. Nice recognition on the part of Mark Kent to support that puck. Shug gets it back to him. That lane is wide open. And great precision on the shot from Kent for 5-1 lead. Shug and assist, Kandari and assist as well. And Kent's first of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And Justin Shug was part of the championship team a year ago in Ramuski, but he was hurt early in the tournament with a shoulder injury, did not return, did not play in the final. Ellis already two assists, nearly his first goal. Fowler hit Cassian, who had been upended in front. Ellis will carry in. Ryan Ellis off Nemesis stick. Justin Brandon has scored a little momentum. 40 seconds later. Well, that's Bob Luger. He put so much emphasis on those shifts after a goal. Cassian at the end of a lengthy shift. Back hands it. It's blocked. Ryan. White back towards Cassian. Trying to keep beat him to the puck, but popped it up. Timmons in front. Broken up. Cassian. The shares look behind him. But he has it. You know, Peter, we've seen at times through the course of this event, the Brandon defender standing still and watching the puck be moved around. That's what we have seen a lot here in the last couple of minutes, and the reason for the 5-1 lead. You'll see in the middle of your screen here, but before defender standing around watching the puck move, and now that allows Cassian A to cycle it, B get it back. Four defenders right there, feet not moving. Cassian with another pretty good chance. Wins are out shooting Brandon in the game, 38 to 13. Tanu just scored. Kendari and Mitchell. Herbob slides it for Brody Melnichuk. Off of Wellwood. Back out with Timmons and Mitchell. Matt Calvert, you know he will quit in his final junior game. Wellwood around Veslin spots Timmons. One hands it in deep. Calvert will head off the stone on a change. Pindari with a burst into the Brandon end of the rink. Pindari dumped by Erba. Hall steals again to Shug. High wrister and a hard one. Shouldered away by the stairs. And Shed exits the zone to Michael Furlan. Rare shift for Brandon's fourth line. Brandon Walker to Furlan. Hits Ryan Ellis with that pass attempt. Furlan stays right with it on the cycle. Brandon Walker and Paul Sorelli. Sorelli crunched by Harry Young and Henry. Starts in the other direction to shove. Shug and drive. Henry castle the rebound to Sears. He's lost his base match. And the whistle blows. Jacob Desairs giving it everything he has, but his team in a huge hole. Windsor outscoring Brandon 3 1 in the second period, outshooting them 24 5. The, the best period I have seen any team play in person this season. Wawadia shoots it in and gives Chase. Puck bounces, fair to the line, held in by Melnichuk to Tony Reala. Fowler 
puts on the brakes. Out of trouble and finds Nemus, who to me has the biggest goal in this game. Bump up goal after Brandon started to gain some momentum. And Bob Boogner really leaned on this line with Nemus and Cassian and Ryan. Every line for Windsor, the three lines they go with have all contributed. Timmons once more ripped it on Kurt Blank. Pass, we need and can't do it. The most recent Windsor goal. Off the stick of Mitchell in deep. Redicky. To weave. Very young is step up. One of the Windsor players most certainly playing their final junior game too. Timmons. Mitchell, the other 20-year-olds. Weave on left wing. Weave. Good stick by New Jersey prospect Harry Young. Top scorers are brought to you by Boston Pizza, your hockey headquarters with big TVs and great food. Boston Pizza, you're among the hockey fans. Taylor Hall now in a tie with Jimmy Bubnick at eight points. Enrique and Rayala involved in this game, tied at seven to Tyler Shattuck, who has gone home with Calgary. Seven points, a great tournament for that line of Shattuck, Kuko, and Bubnick. And to Taylor Hall. Hall with another goal and an assist. He has only been shut out in two hockey games, Sam, since the 29th of November. Looking for his third point of the day. And fires it wide and high. Shen. Calvert and Stone. Calvert. Mark Handers had just a terrific day. And the Windsor blue line, as has his partner, Kandari. Hall, off the glove of Shen. Over the shoulder of Desairs, past the net. Peter Taylor Hall, just so good. Power play, even strength. 23 of the points he scored in the postseason at even strength. And Windsor continues its winning ways, coming into tonight. Seven straight wins at the MasterCard Memorial Cup, including a four win streak to win it last year. 11 straight wins overall, including the Cup in the Ontario Hockey League playoffs. So scoring opponents 19 to 8 and a trail for exactly three minutes and two seconds through what is three plus game. Fowler scores! Hit a body in front. So deflating for the home side, but Peter, you can't stress how important Faceoffs are enough in this game, and it's another win here for Namus. Goes D to D. You'll see both the Windsor stick with Ryan in the way and the defenseman for Brandon. Fowler tees it up. Schneider is there, so too is Ryan, and it ends up making its way past Jacob Desairs. And Windsor starting to run away. Cam Fowler rated by NHL Central Scouting number five amongst North American skaters. I think we'll get credit for the goal. We'll await the announcement. Fowler has an assist in the game as well on the Timmons goal. Fowler leads all defensemen in scoring in the tournament with six points. Plenty bolted in at the line, and Nemus playing his best game in the tournament too. Draws an assist, and Ryan Ellis with his third assist of this game. As Bob Booker said this morning after the morning skate that in order to win, your best players have to be your best players, and that has surely been the case for the Windsor Spitfires in this match. Ellis, three assists. Paul, a goal and an assist. Henrique, a goal and an assist. Nemus, a goal and an assist. They have simply overpowered the Brandon Wheat Kings. Mitchell, his shot, blockered away by Desir. Wellwood has contributed with a goal. Wellwood versus Shin. Doubles it to Mark Stone, and Stone. Stick lifted by Tim. You are watching a team and a franchise that might just go down as one of the best. 
Hard to argue with the way things have gone for the Spitfires. You look at the MasterCard Memorial Cup win streak. You look at a team that has breezed through the round robin portion of this event, needing overtime to win its third game, but still getting through quite easily. And winning handily here tonight. A four goal explosion in the second period. Fair intercepts to Ray Allen. Look to return it. And Kandari in the road. Paul accepts the pass from Henry. To shot with Kandari moving up. Taylor Hall has Henry. Failed to pull the trigger, but won't stop battling. Malagnac and a nice tip from Weed into the final minute of a stellar performance by the Spitfires. Shot from the boards by Schneider, held by Grubauer. Just the 14th shot he's made in this game. Well, Peter, you look at the Brandon Wee Kings, and some people were wondering whether or not this is a deserved team to be here. Let me tell you that it is, but let me also tell you that you're watching the dynasty here with the Windsor Spitfires. Brandon won 50 games, finished second in the Western Hockey League, won a huge semifinal game in overtime to Calgary. Definitely deserving to be here. But you are seeing a juggernaut in the Windsor Spitfires tonight. In the tournament opener, it happened in the first. When Windsor won 9-3 over the weekend tonight in the second period. Took a little while for this juggernaut to get its feet underneath them. And credit Brandon for that. They were really ready to go off the hop. It has been truly special to watch this Windsor team tonight. To Hopper to Grubauer, he shovels it to Kent. And the buzzer goes. And the Windsor Spitfires are 20 minutes away from repeating as MasterCard Memorial Cup champions. Play of the second period is brought to you by Toyo Tires. Driven to perform. All eyes on Taylor Hall as Ellis' shot gets through. It ends up on Hall's stick, and he just lights it up. That is a rocket over the shoulder of Jacob Caceres from the short side. Taylor Hall, another outstanding performance here at the MasterCard Memorial Cup. A treat coming your way in the second period intermission. Three lucky contestants will shoot for a million dollars in the old Dutch shootout. You don't want to miss that. Quite a performance by the defending champions. Taylor Hall, a goal and an assist, tied for the tournament lead in scoring. He and his teammates know they are 20 minutes away from hoisting the MasterCard Memorial Cup for a second consecutive year, barring a miracle comeback from the Wheat Kings. Once in this tournament's history, this type of comeback occurred in a round-robin game involving Lethbridge and Hall in 1997. The score was the same for Hall entering this third period, and Lethbridge roared back to win 7-6 in overtime. Ray Allen flips it on Grubauer. Interesting way to handle that shot. His Cassian will backhand it in and head off on a change. Yeah, you'll see a lot of that from Windsor. Short shifts, a lot of dump-ins, trying to remain on the right side of the puck. And as Bob Booger said to Rob Falls in the first period, puck management. Henry, Shug, and Hall. Back out for Bob Booger. A two-time CHL Coach of the Year. And closing in on a second straight MasterCard Memorial Cup. Lawadniak, Weeb for Fair, and Ellis. Leads all point getters with three assists, breaks it up. Enrique, a backhander. Stop by to Sears. Wins it with 27 second period shots. Including those four goals. And time to look at that scoring summary. Brought to you by Vaughn. Take your game to the next level. Take you back to the first, a 2 nothing lead for Windsor on goals from Henrique and Wellwood. And into the second period of play, a four goal outburst with Matt Calvert's third on the power play, sandwiched in between. Canton with his first 
Shots on goal, 43 to 15 in favor of the Windsor Spitfires. The goal by Nemus, such a turning point. 40 seconds after Calvert had given Brandon some momentum, the building back into it a little bit, and a strange goal that required review for a significant amount of time. And a puck that Nemus jammed past the Sears on the short side. I spoke to Tim Campbell, the uh, NHL video review goal judge, and he said that although Darcy Birchall, the referee, was in the act, the puck had already crossed the line, so surely that was taken into consideration. Well, when he scored the huge goal late in the first that turned 1-0 into 2-0. Timmons with Mitchell back to line in Canton. Mark Canton came over in a big deal from Belleville at the deadline. The game has improved so much. Bob Jones, who looks after the defense of the Windsor Spitfires, doing wonders with Canton. Hard shot by Redeke and a very impressive save by Grubau. Mitchell shoots it in. He's playing his last major junior hockey game as Toronto Maple Leafs third rounder Dale Mitchell played very well despite the fact that he is yet to collect the point in the game but Mitchell has five in the tournament Cassie and redirects it in deep to Calvert as Kenny Ryan a run at Bethlehem they're involved and Ryan seemed to receive the worst of it but here he comes Kenny Ryan whose father, Casey, was a linebacker in his college football days at Notre Dame. Stone, Calvert, Fowler blocked it, and it came up and hit him in the chin area. One thing Windsor does really well, sticks in lanes and getting in the way of plenty of shots. Fowler has not hurt his draft status in this MasterCard Memorial Cup. Shin, an opportunity, and Taylor Hall lifted Shin stick. Two Canadian World Junior teammates. Stone keeps it alive on the right wing board. And Shug back to strip him. Colby Roback, a rolling puck to Rayala. Shug, Henrique. Couple opportunities to clear and fails to do so. And Brandon will make changes. Passing the four-minute mark in this third period. Here we've watched Taylor Hall produce offensively. We've watched him take bumps, and we've watched him block shots. But here, a defensive play down 6-1 with a stick lift on Shen. And so now showing that side of his game as well. Not necessarily a stick lift, but he surely got it in the road of Shen, enough to take what surely would have been a goal away. Right, number two behind... Tyler Sagan of the Plymouth Whalers both finished the Ontario Hockey League season with 106 points. The Spitfires knocked off the Plymouth Whalers in four straight in round number two on the road to Brandon. Paul outscored Sagan in that series, eight to nothing. Five eighteen, the shots on goal in favor of the Spitfires. One of the most impressive championship performances I have ever witnessed to this point. It goes back to just a wonderful second period. You can pick a couple of different spots. The goal late in the first, the Nemus goal after Brandon scored. Wellwood, a backhand attempt and a good one for his second of the evening. He's got plenty in the skates of Redicky. Leave the trailer. Find Scott Clenny. Schneider holds it in. Weak attempt and Fowler. Skates to a loose puck and shoots it into Brandon territory. The last impressive effort in a final eyewitness like this, you have to go back to a repeat champion. Cassian scores! Jack Cassian off the stairs and in. 7-1. Peter, coming into this event, so many people asking us what they thought of the Windsor Spitfires. Is that a better team or a worse team than last year? And here, Ryan gets it to Cassian. Cassian was not here last year, acquired in a trade from the Peterborough Peets. 
and many of us answered that this was a deeper team due in large part to the addition of Cassie in a first round pick of the Buffalo Sabres. You add Canton to that mix, you add Fowler to that mix, and this is an impressive plot for sure for the Windsor Spitfire. Cassian second point of this night. Second goal, both of those coming against Brandon in the tournament as well. Was talking about impressive championship final performances. The last team to repeat the 94 and 95 Kamloops Blazers in the final in Kamloops in 1995. They beat Detroit, the Junior Red Wings, 8-2 in that final. You have dominating teams, you have experience coming back, and that really serves well in your second go round. Mark Cannon looking for his second of the game. Stop by the Steelers. Windsor closing in on the 50 shot mark. That was a stated goal for Bob Bergman. He had watched this week Kings team play so well in the semifinal against Calgary. He felt that they needed to get traffic and plenty of pucks to take it to Sarah's way. A tough night for the home team. Let's take you back to a dominant second period by the Windsor Spitfires. It starts with Taylor Hall, wrist shot from the dot. From there, it was 3 0. And Calvert would get a goal. And then, after a lengthy review, Greg Nemus would get back on the board. Mark Canton stepping up on a nice assist from Justin Shug. And Cam Fowler on a D to D finds its way past the Serres. 27 to 7 the shots on goal for Windsor. And one of the best second periods in this event's final that's maybe ever been played. Agreed. Seven Windsor's Spitfires, including Taylor Hall, have multi-point games. Ryan Ellis leading the way with three assists as he will add to his unbelievable resume here tonight. Throwback to the skates of Ray Alla. Ryan Ellis, a world under 17 gold medal, and Ivan Holenka, world under 18 gold medal, world under 18 gold, a world junior championship, and about to win a second straight Memorial Cup. He turned 19 on the 3rd of January. The only thing he hasn't won is the Stanley Cup, just because he hasn't gotten there yet. And was one shot away from back-to-back -back world junior titles this year in Saskatoon part of the Canadian crew that lost in overtime in the final to Cam Fowler in the United States. Fowler looking to become the first American to win the MasterCard Memorial Cup and the World Junior Championship in the same year thanks to Stefan Lou of RDS for that one. Furlan uses the boards to send it out. And Kenton slides it to the aforementioned Fowler. Fowler's family hails from Newfoundland, and Cam was actually born in Canada in Windsor. No! Funny how that worked out. Grew up in Farmington Hills, just outside of Detroit. Berlin backhands in front. Stone leaves it for Braden Shin. Shin's pass gobbled up by Mitchell. And squeezes it past Calvert. Timmons, so impressive in this game, to Mitchell. Almost stepped on it to kill Mitchell. They continue to dig for the puck line of doors. And the whistle finally blown. In 1972, the format changed in this tournament, and since that time, there have been four repeat champs, the most latest, uh, the most recent, Kamloops. Go back to Medicine Hat, Cornwall before that, the likes of Scott Arneal and Dale Howarchuk, Doug Gilmore, the new Westminster Bruins, 77 and 78 repeat champions, and Bob Bugner looking to do with the Windsor Spitfires. Bob Bugner played in the 1991 MasterCard Memorial Cup as the captain of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Spokane won that tournament, Sam. One of the most impressive performances I've ever seen in that tournament. They outscored their opponents 27 to 9 in Quebec City on their way to that title. A team that included the likes of Pat Balloon, 
Ray Whitney goaltender Trevor Kidd, who's here today because he's a former Brandon Wheat King as well. It's going to go a long way to looking like that. And it's all said and done here for the Windsor Spitfires. Plenty offside at the line. Windsor adding to the legacy. One year ago, they were 0-2 in the tournament in Ramuska before they roared back with four straight to win the title. Really drawing on the inspiration of Mickey Renault, their captain who had passed away in February of 2008, unexpectedly. And you know, he's never gone from the minds of the players, the coaches, the entire city. He was a Windsor player, a Windsor product, the 18 on the helmet, on the undergarments, and on the jersey forever for Windsor. And I really think such a learning experience, so difficult on young men and the whole Windsor community. And it's really spurred this team on to special things. Something you never think you're going to endure. And then you do it in such a tight knit group. I remember watching the game against Belleville, the first one back after a couple of the Windsor games were canceled, and it was a very moving ceremony. The Calvert wheels in, lost an edge, regained his balance, stopped up by Kendari to Taylor Hall with Henry. Taylor Hall, Henry scores! His second from Taylor Hall. Windsor's found the net eight times. Well, it starts back in the defensive zone for the Windsor Spitfires. Great defensive zone coverage. Calvert goes to the ice. Kandari follows him and then Shug picks it up. He immediately looks up ice after a yell from Hall. Hall to Henrique. And this one makes its way through the five hole. And the celebration thereafter looking a lot like the 4-3 final round Robin game win. That did not mean anything to Windsor. They were already through to the final at that point. This one well in control here as we move to the midway point of period number three. Dale Mitchell back out with Timmons and Wellwood. Wellwood, nice move inside the line, still ragging the puck as Eric Wellwood puts on the brakes, finds Mitchell through the seam. Wellwood. Dumped by Braden Shin to Calvert with Mark Stone. Urban the trailer and Grubauer stops Alexander Urban. Adam Henry, two more goals in a big game. So what's new? The Mastercard Memorial Cup has arrived at Westman Place at Keystone Center, and for a second straight year, it will be presented to the Windsor Spitfires. An impressive performance, to be sure, by the champions of the Ontario Hockey League. Ryan Ellis with three assists, Adam Henrique three points, Taylor Hall three points. These, these guys on the big stage, you can just flat out always count on them to answer the bell. That's that's why they're champs. Yeah, doing it at every level and every big game, having to come together down 0-3 in the Western Conference Championship against the Kitchener Rangers, having to come from 0-2 down at the MasterCard Memorial Cup a year ago, a resilient bunch. Trey Dunnett, a rookie on defense for Winter, his first shift. The same can be said for Derek Lanou and Adam Wallace. Wallace was part of that team that won it all in Ranuski a year ago. And in a very similar role again this year. Brendan Walker, a little hesitation that puts Sorelli offside. You can just feel the disappointment of this building in the community. Brandon in their second Memorial Cup final, dating back to 1979, when they lost 2-1 in overtime in Verdun to the Peterborough Peaks. Talking about terrific teams, one of the best I've ever seen, that team that went 
58-5-9. Allison Croft, Boschman leading the way for Ed McCrimmon for Brandon on defense. Lost almost as many times in that tournament as it turned out as they did the entire year. And a penalty is coming up on the play. Well, in search of a championship, uh, Manitoba. Here are some of the teams that have played in the province, losing the Stanley Cup to Ottawa in 1904. You go up to 1979, a loss by Brandon to Peterborough. The only community to appear in all three without a win. The Windsor captain will make his way to the penalty box as a result of this. And now it would appear he'll have company on the other side. And Brent Redicky. Both of them getting involved in a practice after the whistle and the officiating staff just wanting to make sure that nothing gets out of hand and in fact that Young did get the extra. As Justin Shug made his way to the box right before the puck was dropped. So it is indeed a power play here for Brandon. Brandon's lone goal of this game. They cut a Windsor lead from 3-0 to 3-1 in the second. Came on the power play by Calvert, 20. Power took a peek in behind him. He's really been a non-factor in this game, as the score would indicate. With the exception of the first two or three minutes, where a couple of big saves helped his team get its feet underneath it, following a long layoff between their final round robin game and this final. Following the game, a Tiso T-Touch watch is being awarded to the top award winners from the tournament, the most valuable player, top scorer, sportsmanlike player, and top pool tender. Thank all the great sponsors, the organizers, Jeff Crystal and the organizing committee here in Brandon who have put on such a wonderful show over the last 10 days. Willis McDonald, Kelly McCrimmon, a part of that, who had so many hats to wear for the last 18 months in preparation for this event. And the community has embraced it. Obviously not happy with the result here today, but all tournament long have supported this event in kind with a full building. The 50-50s for any indication. They've done a nice job there. Today's spot is about 26,000. They have done a wonderful job, and we thank you for all your hospitality and kindness. Every cup is special. And this one, no exception. And at the end of the day, it's been special to watch a great Windsor team go to work. Ryan stopped by the Sears on Windsor's 50th shot of the game. And Jacob DeSeres, no doubt, has had his moments throughout this tournament, but in this situation, a great job to follow Ryan across as Kandari flicks it ahead. Ryan cuts across the ice. DeSeres follows him. And he cannot fault DeSeres having Seen 50 shots in this game. 27 of those in the four goal Windsor second period. 2 0 after one, 6 1 after two. Braden Shen so instrumental in that semi final win and truly the best game of this event by a considerable margin when Brandon beat rival Calgary 5 4 in a wonderful semi final here on Friday night. A game that required overtime. Demas. Rollback holds it in. Windsor kills off the Brandon power play. And Shug wheels into Brandon territory. Justin Shug gets back on balance. Fowler intent to shoot it to an open corner as Demas heads off on a change. Berlin with Walker and Sorelli. Brendan Walker, Sorelli, and Grubauer stops him from close range. It's the crew chant. Comes up from the winter supporters. Game review is brought to you as always by the fine folks at Bauer Hockey.
Taylor Hall with a goal and two assists to lead the way for the Windsor Spitfires. Total domination in that second period where they outshot Brandon 27 to seven and scored on four of those 27 shots. Eight players with a multi-point effort in this game. Hall and Hammond have got it started early on as the rivalry from the round robin match on opening night heated up. But from there, Hall really started to take over. Second period goal, top shelf on to Sears using that speed and distribution abilities. He finds Henrique on an assist. All smiles for Taylor Hall, who has a chance to become a repeat MVP. And no one has done that. Since the format change. Johnson comes out of his own zone to Derek Lanou. Lanou in Bethlehem. Knocks him to the ice. Johnston wins a board battle. Hops over the stick of Lanou, and they would explode in the Windsor pinch if Lanou scored a goal in this game. Yeah, maybe the same way they exploded when Wallace got on the board earlier. In terms yeah, straight Heisman at the bench. Lanou's from nearby Bell River, just outside of Windsor. This guy might foil his trade in the NHL. Dale Mitchell hopes to continue to be in the Leafs' plans. Surprise return. Started the season in the American Hockey League with the Toronto Marlies and then was returned. The play of the game is brought to you by Under Armour. Protect this house. I will. 1-0 at this point, and we are late in the first period of play. Fowler keeps it in. It goes from Timmons to Nemus, and then back to Wellwood. That would make it 2-0. The oh-so-important goal at the end of a period. Right now, that one stands as the game winner. Eric Wellwood. You wonder how this game might have turned out if Brandon gets out of the first period down only one. Those goals are just so important late in the frame. And then the other Nemus goal, so important as well. And Kelly McCrimmon looks on. Not much he can do at this point with 5.09 remaining. Try and get some of his older players a few final spins here at the Westman place. Calvert, Ford, Shen, Kandari broke it up. Kandari, an impressive plus 10 entering this period. Not sure if he's added that to those totals. Chen to Calvert, heads to the front of the net with Stone. Mark Stone keeps it alive to Matt Calvert. He has the lone brand rule. Closing out his junior career is Matt Calvert. Steered off his stick by Kent. Dale Mitchell enters the zone. Timmons, Wellwood, Timmons, Mitchell. Pretty to watch. Dale Mitchell, his first of the day. And a smile on his face because Mitchell, with his efforts, the score already well in hand, really just trying to get on the board here in what will be his final junior game. And a great three. Way passing play ended with Mitchell getting on the board. And you know, you don't want really to want to run up the score on your opponent. Mitchell wanting so bad, so badly to get on the board. And here at 9-1, it should just be dump and chase hockey and a lot of the forward line. Wojciech plays at the center. Shot in by Ellis. Jay Fair carries ahead. One time pass. Fair. Mawadnia. Gary Young plays it to Derek Lanou. Fair intercepts. Real, a great return. Fair shoots it wide. Fair. A big reason Brandon was in the final. He scored the overtime winner in the semi against Calgary. Off a little on end on that occasion. Not like it was on Friday night. Hamina back in his own territory.
territory. Get down the ice. Bowers. Craig Dunnick tied up by the referee, and out it comes. Pressing off the skate. Adam Henry to Taylor Hall, looking to add to his totals. And I think an MVP status for a second straight year. Shot by Dunnick from the line. Hall keeps it deep for Henry. Splash there. Lenny with a big bump on Hall. That stung him. And Hall responded with a two-hander. Get a look at what happened. Glenny with a full speed check. And I don't think Taylor Hall expected the things to be uh, this rough this late in the game with that sort of lead. And Hall doesn't like it at all. Watch the two hander right here administered on the back of the leg of Glenny. And that is right in the referee's sight, Darcy Virgil. So Hall goes to the box. 9 1. The score for the Winter Spitfires. Brandon on the power play, shot on target. Stopped by Grubauer. Kenny Ryan is sticks stuck in the boards. Amina rips one on target, and then Lewodniak a little extra for the goaltender. And Lewodniak with a punch on Grubauer is Brandon's frustration coming out here. And we will have more penalties with 2.17 left in this championship final at the 2010 MasterCard Memorial Cup. Grubauer has just been so steady for the Spitz in this game. He gets the gang rush right after the whistle had blown. Lewodniak there administering a shot, and that does not sit well with the Windsor Spitfires. To a man standing up for one another, as the practice would get back to its feet punches and the shots would continue and again not wanting this thing to get out of control here especially with those who may be playing their last junior games several players going to the box for both sides Philip Grubauer along with the Mark Canton came over for Bob Buchner and a deadline deal a big one from Belleville Warren Reichel the architect with all the scouting staff, personnel. What an awesome job they have done in building this franchise back. It's all smiles now, but he could have made a pot of coffee nervous earlier in the day. Including the three-on-three -three game the coaches and Reichel participate in day of morning skates. From the onset, Peter, this Winter Spitfires team looks so comfortable coming here, and you have to think that the experience from last year just played so well. You know, when you get to the MasterCard Memorial Cup, you have to go on the tournament schedule as opposed to creating your own schedule when you're playing during the regular season. And that can be tough for teams to adjust to. You know, the next toughest thing after that is, as a head coach, how do you impose your will? How do you impose your style of play on the opponent? And the team that is best able to do that oftentimes comes out as the champion. We saw it last year where that will was not imposed in the first two games by Windsor. They got things turned around and imposed their will the rest of the way, much the same way as they have done all tournament long here in 2010. Windsor scored nine times in the tournament opener versus Brandon. Wellwood intercepted in front by Urban to Tony Reala and Timmons on the backtrack. So responsible. Such a key piece. And there's a guy Warren Reichel and company weren't sure would be back for his final season of major junior hockey. Redicky wheels into the zone. Loose! Loose! 2-0 after one. The late goal by Wellwood. Really important. 3-0 when Taylor Hall scored. Hamina, his wrister in what is likely, even though he's a 19-year-old, to be his final game in junior hockey. Travis Hamina will be back.
bitterly disappointed, the great competitor that he is. And the Hugs begin with less than a minute to go at the Windsor Bank. And rightly so, we have witnessed one of those teams that people will talk about. And when I say teams, I talk about two years, Sam, not just one. With so many returnees. Touched on the adversity. Calvert looking for some room and slides it wide. It's the appreciation for their home weekend being shown. And I think for what even the Brandon fans will look back at in weeks or months or years is my oh my, how great was that Windsor team that we witnessed in 2010. And how much fun was it for the community to host this event? As big an event as Southwestern Manitoba has ever faced. Hamannick, Grubauer not giving up. Another chance for Hamannick. The repeat is complete. And still, MasterCard Memorial Cup champions, the Windsor Spitfires. Safe to say that this is now a dynasty. Back to back champions since the format changed in 1972 for just the fifth time. And Bob Fugner leading the way, a two time CHL Coach of the Year, a two time MasterCard Memorial Cup champion as head coach. He is the first to do that and to accomplish that. And this is a team now that will go down in history as a back to back champ. Pleasure to watch, a pleasure to deal with this group. Credit the Kitchener Rangers. They knocked this team off three straight times in the Western Conference semifinal. As you see the disappointment on the face of the Wheat Kings, their general, owner, governor, executive of the year, and head coach, and Travis Hammond. These pictures are always difficult to watch. But Windsor plain and simply, Sam, way too much. All the top players. We saw eight multi-point efforts from 11 returning players in the opening round match on Friday and another similar effort here tonight for the returnees. Let's go down to our Rob Falls. And I'm with Adam Henrik. Twice is the charm, and you guys certainly, even with the layoff, took you about a period to get it going. Yeah, I, mean, I think the first two minutes, 10 minutes were a little rough, but uh, after that we got through it. We knew they were going to come with hard playing at home in front of their own fans, but, but you know, it was a great time. We, we, we turned it around there after the first two goals, and I think that was key for us. Last year you made a point of dedicating your performance to Mickey Renault, but Mickey was again front and center for this run to the Memorial Cup. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's been there since that day. He's been with us, and uh, you know what? We know he's watching. And we hope the Reynolds are watching this is for all those guys back home. I'll let you get in the handshake line. Congratulations. Thank you. Adam Henrique. Such a clutch performer. I thought he probably take nothing away from Taylor Hall could have easily been named the Stafford Smythe MVP of the last year's MasterCard Memorial Cup. Scored the semi-final overtime winner against Drummondville. Scored the opening goal in the championship game a year ago, came back this year, scored the opening goal to set the wheels in motion for Bob Bugner's team. Henrique with another three-point performance as he embraces his world junior teammate, Braden Shen, and will send it back to our rough balls. Obviously disappointed Matt Calvert. Your fans were behind you, they were charged up, but this is a powerful Windsor team. Yeah, they, uh, they they got a good team, and uh, you know, and I think we thought we had a pretty good team all year, and uh, it obviously wasn't our best effort tonight. But uh, we got down, and we just kind of got away from our game plan again. But uh, full credit to them; uh, they deserve to win it. And uh, I'm proud of our guys. We had a great season. Uh, we battled through some adversity to get here, and uh, I'm still proud of our guys. You really tried to establish your game in that first period. That late goal seemed to take a little bit of wind out of it. Yeah, I think when they got up three nothing, and then we got the three one goal, and then. They got that weird bounce, uh, when the ref called that one in, it just kind of kind of deflated us, and uh, we, we got away from our structure. And it's something that we had problems with all year, but, but credit to them, it's uh, it helped the job with them. You did your city and your franchise proud, Matt. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. The Wheat 
Kings will always be number one. Congratulations to the fans for putting on such a great show. The community, we've talked about that. But on this day, the Windsor Spitfires showed what a great team they are. We'll be back with more after this. Taylor Hall and the Windsor Spitfires have won back-to-back -back Memorial Cup championships. First organization to do so since Don Hayes Kamloops Blazers did just that with wins in 1994-95. Now to the public address announcer here in Brandon, Mike Gademski. Now it is my pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Rob Falls of Roger Sportsnet who will conduct the on-ice festivities. Rob, take it away. Thank you, Mike. Brandon, you did yourself proud. What a MasterCard Memorial Cup you have hosted in this city. Now we have to hand out a little hardware. This is the Con Stafford Smythe Trophy that goes to the MVP of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. The man who wins this will always be remembered as having himself an outstanding 10-day period. Well, the winner in 2010 already has his name on it. From the Windsor Spitfires, with nine points in the tournament, Taylor Hall. That's one trophy, but the trophy that 60 teams in Canada and the U.S. play for is next to be presented. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome the president of the Canadian Hockey League and the jewel in every junior hockey player's career, the Memorial Cup. Mesdames et Messieurs, au nom de la Ligue canadienne de hockey, j'aimerais féliciter la ville de Brandon pour avoir été les hôtes de la Coupe Memorial MasterCard. Merci beaucoup. On behalf of Commissioners Gilles Corteau and Ron Robinson of the Quebec and Western, Ho Western Hockey Leagues, I would like to express our sincere thank you and gratitude to the city of Brandon and the province of Manitoba for your spectacular support. As well, as well to Kelly McCrimmon for his energy, passion, and wisdom who along with the Brandon Wheat Kings organization brought us to this very special hockey community. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Wheat Kings. As well to the host organizing committee, led by Jeff Crystal and the hundreds of volunteers, you simply made this the best ever MasterCard Memorial Cup. Thank you very, very much. On behalf of the Canadian Hockey League, and as well, just to quickly acknowledge the fact that Taylor Hall became the first ever two-time winner of the Stafford Smythe MVP Award. And a little bit 
late, but it's never too late, I would suggest to Adam Henry, congratulations on the 99 award as OHL playoff MVP. The Windsor Spitfires will arguably go down as one of the greatest CHL teams of all time. And it's a tribute to the leadership and management of owners Bob Bugner, Warren Reichel, Peter Dobridge, along with their staff, Bob Jones, DJ Smith, all the players, their parents, families, billets, and the fans of Windsor. Truly an outstanding team, outstanding season. Gentlemen, you're a credit to our great game. I'd like to call upon Harry Young to receive the award. The 2010 MasterCard Memorial Cup champion, Windsor Spitfires. We want to also take this opportunity to salute the Moncton Wildcats the Calgary Hitmen and your Brandon Wheat Kings for making this a memorable 10 day period. I'm joined by Harry Young, the captain of the Windsor Spitfires. You lifted that trophy last year, you get to do it again. You guys rededicated yourselves to making sure you could be back in this championship. Yeah, it's, it's been a great year, a great couple of years. Uh, couldn't have had more fun with this group. Uh, I'm glad that we went out winners. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't say enough about this coaching staff and this organization. They've done everything for me and uh, for this team. You've learned an awful lot about this team, especially being down 0-3 to the Kitchener Rangers, charging back and then never looking back. No, you, you, you can't knock this team down. Uh, we're too strong mentally. It was one of the most resilient teams uh, of all time, I'm sure. Uh, this core group of guys, you know, we can't say enough about them. They've, uh, they've done it all. Congratulations. Enjoy this moment. Thank you. Harry Young is the captain of the Windsor Spitfires. Brian Ellis. Brian Ellis is a stalwart on defense, and you're back again. You guys wanted to, that returned to this opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we're just excited to win it again. We had a hard fought game the weekends. They played hard, but I'm just glad to win this again. They really challenged you in that first period, came out strong, and appeared that late goal in the end of the first certainly helped you in your cause. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can get up two off of the first, it's key, especially with the crowd they had. The fans are unbelievable, and I'm just happy. You guys, we're excited. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Congratulations. Thank you. That is crew for Grubauer. Philip Grubauer, very solid throughout the entire tournament. He was so instrumental for Windsor in their championship series victory in the Ontario Hockey League, Sam, over the Barry Colts, a sweep. Windsor, two-time back-to-back champions. They end the season on a 12-game postseason winning streak. They outscore their opponents here at the MasterCard Memorial Cup to the tune of 28-9. to not much more you can say about that a dynasty in the making in the Canadian Hockey League and when people look back 40 and 50 years from now they will look at this as one of the finest junior teams ever assembled and Rod Falls is with one fine head coach Bob Buchner you have returned to the championship and you have won it again uh, feelings right now uh, it's, it's hard to imagine it's sinking in I know we did it last year but uh, do it back to back obviously it's, uh, it's so hard to do and it's such a uh, such a moment here I, you know I'm emotional because I'm losing a lot of these guys and it's uh, that's why this one was so special because uh, we did it with the uh, a great court group of kids and they're gone now after this uh, after this tournament so um, we're gonna miss them but it was just an amazing amazing experience for us last year a lot was made with the loss of Mickey Renault you dedicated yourself to the trophy last year he was front and center and in your hearts this year again oh, 100 percent a day goes by that we don't talk about him uh, uh, he's still with us, and uh, I know his family's watching back home, and they mean so much to us. Uh, you know, he's uh, 
uh, he's the one that built this this character and this team, and he's the one that uh, um, all these guys learn from. Congratulations on this. Thanks, Falsey. Scott Timmons, back-to-back -back champion, also felt what it was like to lose the MasterCard Memorial Cup final when he was part of the Kitchener Rangers that fell to the Spokane Chiefs in 2008. Derek Lanou, one of the newcomers, Craig Dunnick, hoisting the trophy for the first time. And Sam, as the years go on, I will never forget this core group that brought it all together, and I think was really the glue, the Henriques, the Ryan Ellis's, the Greg Nemesis, the Harry Youngs. When things got tough for this team, they kind of put it all together, and this team's best players, when it was really on the line, when you look back over the last two years, always brought their best to the table. And fitting here that this rink, located in Brandon, Manitoba, on 18th Street. They are gathering for the team photo. A second straight MasterCard Memorial Cup for the powerful Windsor Spin Bikes. Dominant in every way, shape, or form. And, and you and I, we talk every day, we spend a ton of time together, and we kind of felt between the two of us that we still hadn't seen Windsor's best at this tournament, even with the 9-3 opening game win and the impressive 6-2 triumph over Calgary. And we kind of wondered out loud today on our way over to the rink, what could occur if everybody brought their A game? We just saw what would happen with this great team when everyone was on top of their game. Competitive edge maintained through the off days by bowling, mini putting, playing video games, practical jokes, and that edge carried over pretty early into this game. Deserving champions, impressive, dominant champions. The Windsor Spitfires as we once again join Rob Falls. I had to get him out of the pile that he was under there. Congratulations, a second straight Memorial Cup and a second straight MVP award. You said you wanted to work on your game. You certainly did that this season. I feel like a, a pretty complete player, and I feel like I contributed. Obviously, there's no, way, uh, no better way to finish it out. So um, just an incredible feeling right now. And um, I, you know, I didn't know what, you know what to expect, and, you know, my feelings after the game, but I don't think I've ever been happier. Last year, you took the hard road to the Memorial Cup final. This time, you go 3-0 and in the round robin. The layoff, it seemed to affect you maybe a little bit in that first period against the weekends. I think they just came out, and they were using their home crowd, and, um, you know, they had, a, they had a lot of adrenaline going, and um, we kind of weathered that storm, and it just kind of took off from there, and it was a picture-perfect game for us, picture-perfect game. So great way to finish this season, and now there's something special that you're awaiting too this summer in LA. Yeah, for sure. I think um, now I can finally focus on you know the draft and really get excited for it. So it's going to be a special time in my career, and um, I think I've done everything I can this summer to put me in a good, or uh, you know this season to put me in a good position. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Congratulations, Taylor. Thank you, Taylor Hall, a two-time MVP and a two-time Mastercard Memorial Cup champion. A sensational talent. What a pleasure it's been to watch Taylor Hall, not only in this tournament, but the last couple of years, even prior to this. I think we've definitely seen this guy play his last game in junior hockey. What do you think? Yeah, I think so, too. And I think he's going to end up going first overall. Hard to argue with how well he's performed every time he's been put on a big stage. And this MVP here in the 2010 MasterCard Memorial Cup cements it for me. What will you take away first and foremost from this 10 day tournament here in Brandon? Just great to get out uh, into a province I don't spend a lot of time in. The people so wonderful here in Brandon, Manitoba. And what I won't forget is a, a dominating performance by the Windsor Spitfires. You, my friend, are not alone. To cap it off, our coverage, thank you so much for joining us through the entire 10 days. It's been our pleasure to bring it to you. Here's Rob Fultz. Brandon can take your breath away with its vistas of serene beauty. Counter that with the enthusiasm of the fans. And yes, the players are pumped too. There's a hockey superstition known as the playoff beard. Some players have more success with it than others. This MasterCard Memorial Cup will be remembered for stunning comebacks.
and the look on the faces of young men who will not see their championship dreams come true. There's the vision of a player trying to play through pain or taking one right in the chops from someone who's been there. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. Get a good look at what it means to play for the top prize. Being here is special. Winning here is unforgettable.